For I have received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of our Lord, and the Mass is being offered for John O'Brien, D. Bauman, John and Sonny Belkis, David and Penny Trutel, David Campbell, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Loretta Grace Dolan, Tommy Schaefer, Walter Jakes, Greg and Katie Nulty, Celine Netherbelt, Rosend, uh, Rosenda Dale, and Kelby Cuevas. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Rosenda Dale, Kelby Cuevas, Celine Netherbelt, Greg and Kitty Nulty, Walter Jex, Tommy Schaefer, Loretta Grace Dolan, Most Holy Trinity parishioners, David Campbell, David and Penny Trutel, John and Sonny Belkis, Dee Bauman, and John O'Brien. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, we born of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you, who are, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me, eat fully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you know not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, 
so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just uh, as from heaven, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, made it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that go forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will, you will draw water joyfully from, from the springs spring. of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw royally from the spring of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout, shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. John saw Jesus approaching him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. 
You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, just a little quick couple of announcements here. We are continuing our adult faith formation classes with Cymbalon, Monday night, 6.30 here at the church. So I uh, hope that you can join us. Also, uh, also kind of like the Marines, I'm looking for a few good men. I, I'd like to, like to join with some folks that are interested in, uh, in journeying on the path of discipleship with the quad. So if you're interested, please give me a call. So today we have the celebration of the baptism of the Lord. And the first point I'd like to make in the baptism in Mark's gospel has to be with what John says about Jesus. John's testimony about who Jesus is. Now, we all know who John the Baptist is, right? He's the, he's the prophet that has come on the scene. He's immersing people in the River Jordan. He's proclaiming a message of repentance from sin and practicing a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And he's also a prophet. And so he says in his teaching, he says, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. Now the question we want to ask here is, is who is John talking about? And most of us, when we read the gospel, we would say, oh, he's talking about Christ. And, and for the most part, that is true. But when you take the words in context, especially in the context of first century Jewish world, you can make a case that that's not the primary meaning of John's proclamation. You see, he doesn't use the word Messiah. You know, he doesn't say, after me is coming the anointed one. He just says, one mightier than I. And he's not worthy to untie his sandals. John is actually preparing people not for the coming of Jesus, not for the coming of just the Messiah, but the coming of God himself. If we go back to Mark 1, 1 through 2, he says, he has John, John the Baptist says, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face who shall prepare thy way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. See, that's coming from Isaiah 40. It's an important prophecy. It's a prophecy of the new Exodus. And so, if you read Isaiah, listen to what he says. It says, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Lift up your voices with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, good news. Lift up, not in fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes. So yes, John is in the wilderness, and he's preparing a way. But if you, if you read it in the context of Isaiah, you see that he's really preparing the people, not just for the Messiah, not for the Savior, but the good news of the advent, the coming of God. And some, some of the biblical scholars have pointed to this in Mark as being the first real implications within the gospel of Mark, that Jesus is not just the, the Messiah, not just the Christ, not just the Savior, but God coming in person. The one God of Israel who comes to inaugurate this new exodus, this new exodus that everyone in Israel was longing for. So the second thing that John says is that, that I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. You see, we, are in, we have two baptisms. So the Greek word baptizo basically means to immerse into water or plunge into water. So when we talk about, we say John the Baptist, we really mean like John the Baptizer because that's what he's doing. He's immersing people into the Jordan River for the forgiveness of their sins. 
And you know, a lot of times when we look at it, we 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 tend to see we tend to see this um, the gospel readings kind of in the fullness of theology. But we have to remember when they were talking about the Holy Spirit, the Trinity really wasn't defined. You know, Jesus doesn't talk about the Paraclete, another person coming to them until he until the Gospels. Uh, Give us the story of, of, of the Last Supper. That's when he talks about the Holy Spirit coming down. The paraclete, right? So, so, but in the first century of Jewish tradition, they were, they were longing for this Holy Spirit because in the end days when the Messiah came, the world would be filled with the Spirit of God. You know, filled with the Holy Spirit. So then we kind of get to the baptism itself, right? And that's actually what we're celebrating today baptism of the Lord. And it says, in those days Jesus came down from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And it of course means he was immersed in the waters of the Jordan. But Mark's accounts have two features that stand out. First, when Jesus comes out of the water, right, it says immediately he saw the heavens open. The heavens open. But, but the, the Greek word for, for open is, is a little bit different than English, right? The, the Greek word is schizio, which mean, which literally means torn open. And it's, we get the word schizophrenic from that, right? Because the person's per personality has been torn, right? It's been, it's been asunder. And so that's what we see. We see that Mark says, is, is, he sees the clouds open and the heavens torn apart, right? And then a voice comes down, thou art my beloved son. And see, if we look at the Greek again, right? Is this word husio? He says, God says, this is his husio, his son. And so there's this implicit revelation, right, both of the fatherhood of God and the divine sonship of Christ in the baptism. But it's interesting with those two words, schizio and husis, that they're found in the account of the baptism, but they're also found in the account. Jesus' crucifixion. In the baptism, the heavens are schizio, torn open, right? And the Father declares, this is my beloved Son. At the crucifixion, right? the veil of the temple is torn in two. Right? And we have the words of the centurion, truly, this man was the Son of God. We see that husio again, that same term. Now, if we, if we know a little bit about the veil at the temple, which we do from, from the story of Josephus, for example, we know that that veil had the constellations on it. It had the stars of the heavens on it. So when it was torn, there was that same symbolism, right? That same symbolism that the heavens were torn open. So the baptism isn't just a revelation Jesus' divine sonship, right? It isn't being anointed with the Spirit, but rather it is also an anticipation of his passion and death on the cross. It's an anticipation of his crucifixion. You know, there's a, a book written by uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, and it's Jesus of Nazareth. And in that book, he brings out this same, this same link between the baptism of Christ and the crucifixion. And I'd like to share a little bit of that for us to reflect on for just for a bit. He says, looking at the events in light of the cross and resurrection, the Christian people realized what happened. Jesus loaded the burden of all mankind's guilt upon his shoulder. He bore it down into the depths of the Jordan. He inaugurated his public activity by stepping into the place of sinners. His inaugural gesture is an anticipation of the cross. The baptism is an acceptance of the death for the sins of humanity. And the voice that calls out, this is my beloved son, over the baptismal waters is an anticipatory reference to the re resurrection. This explains why in his home, own discourse, Jesus uses the word baptism to refer to his death. Now, a couple of things that stand out from what Pope Benedict says. First, 
It answers the question. It answers the question of why did Jesus need to be baptized? I mean, have you ever wondered that? Why did Jesus need to be baptized? In fact, John asked him in, the, in, in, in another, in another, uh, uh, in, the, um, in Matthew, right? John the Baptist asked, why are you doing this? I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. And then Jesus says, let it be so now, for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. That's not a very clear answer, but obviously he, he, Jesus believes that John will understand this. And so Benedict goes a little bit deeper when he said, so what's happening here is the reason that Jesus has to be baptized, even though he's without sin, is the same reason he goes to the cross, even though he's without sin. He steps into the place of sinners by receiving John's baptism for the forgiveness of sins as an anticipation of the cross, even though he himself is without sin. His own shoulders will atone for the sins of all humanity. For baptism is an ultimate anticipation of Jesus' passion as a suffering servant who atones for the sins of humanity. In other words, Jesus didn't have to be baptized any more than he had to go to the cross. He goes down in the waters of Jordan for our sake and for our salvation. And when, when God talks to him, when he says he was pleased, he's talking to him because he's pleased that he has taken on the will of the Father. That he takes pleasure in the Son as a servant who's doing his Father's will down in the waters of the Jordan, through the waters of the cross. The other part of Pope Benedict's description says this, the baptism is an acceptance of the death for the sins of humanity. Jesus is already saying yes to the cross when he goes down into the water for the Jordan. And I can't help but think about our own baptism, right? What, is, what does Paul say? Paul says this in Romans 6. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism and death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. See, we want to share with him in his resurrection. We have to share with him in his crucifixion. And so when we're baptized, whether we're, when we're, even, even if we're baptized, as infants, right? Your parents, in a way, have signed a contract, right? For an acceptance of death on your behalf, right? But it's not a death that doesn't have meaning because suffering and death of a person who is, who is in Christ participates in the salvific plan, that plan of salvation. It shares his suffering for the salvation of others. The baptized person lives in a way that is configured to Christ, to Christ crucified, Christ raised from the dead. So that's why Jesus refers to his death, his crucifixion as a baptism. Remember when John and James were with Jesus, right? And they said, grant us to sit, one at your right hand, one at your left in your glory. And Jesus says to them, are you able to drink the cup that I will drink or be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? The reason he's saying that is because he sees the cross as the true baptism where he's going to be immersed, not in the waters of Jordan, but in the suffering of the cross. And so, on this feast of the baptism of the Lord, we should remember. Remember the meaning of Jesus' baptism as a suffering servant. And then also the fact that our baptism calls us, each one of us, to be suffering servants as well.
Please stand now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unconsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, which was born of the Virgin Mary, and he became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for Kelby Cuevas, Rosinda Dale, Celine Netherveld, Brady Kitty Nulty, Walter Jett, Tommy Schaefer, Loretta Grace Dolan, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, David Campbell, David and Penny Tutel, John and Sonia Belkis, Dee Bauman, John O'Brien, for the many people dealing with coronavirus, for the many people who are sick and have asked for special prayers, and for all the faithful departed. We remember especially today Armin Boudreau, Charles Perry, and Tommy King. Let us pray. For those entrusted with the work of government, that they may serve the cause of right and strive to establish true justice on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have become lukewarm in their faith, that the spirit given in their baptism will rekindle faith and love in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For families, that parents will make their homes places where children can see and hear God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, inspire all adults to join our discipleship choir. The devil wants them to make excuses. Please, Lord, give them the courage to say yes to the choir process and become intentional disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for all your blessings. Help us to live in your love each day, to do your will, and become saints through Christ our Lord. Amen. Second collection this weekend is for the New Church Fund. Second collection next weekend is also for the New Church Fund. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly in earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And today a quote from John Christendom, born in the year 344, regards the Eucharist. He said, Christ is present. The one Christ who prepared the Holy Thursday table is the very one who now prepares this altar. For it is not a man who makes the sacrificial gift become the body and blood of Christ, but he who was crucified for us, Christ himself. The priest stands there carrying out the action, but the power and graces of God. This is my body, he says. This statement transforms the gifts. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sitting down in your spirit upon them like you do for so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've had us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace and care. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not 
that I should ever be separated from you. Let us pray. Nourish with your sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Now we're about to be drawing again. Medina, all my winning tickets. This is the new raft with the second drawing, so pull my ticket. Get, get in the middle here. The winner is Carol Hassel. Congratulations, Carol. Got a cute little fishing story here. A fella who did a lot of fishing while on this earth knocked at the pearly gates, but St. Peter had to tell him, I'm sorry, no place for you here. You told too many lies in your days on earth. Oh, St. Peter, the fisherman argued, you should understand, you were a fisherman, remember? 